So in my delusional 1am rambling of uh, this week's chapter review for Tokyo Ghoul Re, which is 160, I forgot to mention something <laughs> very important. Uh, it seemed to have everyone on edge at this point, and that is obviously Toka's miscarriage. For the most part, I've gone back and looked through the chapter, considering there's no dialogue whatsoever, and the emphasis on that situation in itself, and how it could uh, evidently come into the story and potentially push forward a part three. And I, I don't want to bring a part three into this but at this point i'm thinking of story integrity and the fact that is ishida trying to wrap up everything by getting rid of the child or is he trying to make part three a more sustainable thing with Kaneki ultimately gunning down for revenge per se for the most part let's start off with toka's situation the whole miscarriage thing has been there since the beginning everyone kind of has had it in the back of their mind since we found out that she was pregnant or hell since Kaneki and toka even had sex uh, for the most part a lot of people wanted this child to be a thing for obvious reasons and the fact that we've had so many close encounters but it's ultimately no result for it you know no implications implying that the child has been injured and that Toga's been you know somewhat decently okay at this point everyone's kind of been put at ease but this chapter has really put the fear back into people has really put the fear back into the future of the child and what's evidently going to happen for the most part I've seen a lot of people trying to explain the blood situation where is it coming from you know how it couldn't be the child and for the most part I feel like that's not necessarily true throughout the entirety of the chapter there is no blood on Toka whatsoever prior to her getting hit and even after her getting hit right firstly she goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with one kind of in front of her she like blocks it and whatnot using her arms and then for the most part the more important one is that she gets hit in the back of the head but clobbered to the ground so she hits the ground pretty hard she then gets back up and we see the results of what actually happened and she is is bleeding very heavily from the waist down, right? It's mostly pooling from the inside of her legs to the outside of her legs. There's a lot of it. More importantly, there is emphasis on her legs and there's emphasis on a pool of blood. Now, I do want to point this out more directly, right? The pool of blood. People saying it was looking like a fetus or something like that. Now, as, as much as that would have been really cool to see, I just don't see it. For me, it just looks like a pool of blood. However, the very closed pool of blood, right? It's not splattered all along the ground. It's not all in different places places there's literally one big pool and then like a little pool next to it for the most part if this was her bleeding on the back of her shirt or the back of her legs even or just anywhere else other than the inside of her legs the blood would not have been pooled like that now I'm trying to look at it realistically for the most part if this blood was coming from the back of her shirt you know where she got hit potentially in the back of the head it stripped down her shirt there was no way it would have formed this massive pool of blood there's only two different variations right it's her having a miscarriage and the blood has as grim as it sounds, has just pooled out like that from you know where, or she's actually spit it out of her mouth. That's literally like the only two results I could see um, a blood pool form like that. So close knit together and not sprayed everywhere. That in itself kind of dispels the fact that, oh, you know, what if it was dripping down the back of her shirt and onto the back of her legs? For the most part, there's no way that blood would have pooled like that. It would have been droplets everywhere. And even if you look at her legs, there is blood droplets kind of all around. You know what I mean? Like there, there is blood forming off the back of her coat and everything but there's no way it's leaving a blood pool like that for the most part that was the biggest thing for me that would imply that she's actually had a miscarry I, I will point out the, the differences between a miscarry and a stillbirth a miscarry is uh, obviously losing your child before 20 weeks of being pregnant and then anything after 20 weeks of being pregnant is considered a stillbirth for the most part I think the miscarriage is a legitimate thing just looking at the emphasis on the chapter it was very sly of Ishida to do it was very unnoticed and you could easily gloss over it without really paying any attention to it just like I did but now a lot of people have picked up on it and it really does question the future of what's gonna happen next you know what's gonna happen with the child what's gonna happen with Toka what's gonna happen with Carnegie the biggest thing right now regarding the child regarding Carnegie and everything along those lines is what is Carnegie gonna be like because this is still the biggest mystery to us and how this evidently rolls into the whole Toka having a miscarriage really will depend on how Carnegie reacts now this could ultimately roll into a part three would entail to Kaneki finding out that Toga's had a miscarriage and him being very disappointed in himself, obviously being very upset, uh, but also maybe trying to push his vengeance towards Furuta, the person that ultimately turned him into Dragon or forced him into that state. Now, for the most part, this will really test Kaneki's character because if Toga tells him the truth, right, if Toga tells him that the reason why we've lost our child is because these demon, ghoul, Kagane things that have been created by Dragon, by you at that point, 
it ultimately injured me to that extent where I lost my child. You know, I, I got knocked around. And don't get me wrong, Toka has been knocked around a lot. She's had extremely close calls, you know, going up against extremely powerful people. Suzuya and Hanbi, for example. She's gone up against Matsuki a couple of times. She's gone up against Aura. Like, there's a bunch of people she's gone up against. And she's done an extremely good job protecting herself. Uh, but she has been ultimately knocked around quite a bit. You know, she doesn't have to be cut on the stomach for her to lose the child. No, 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 no. It's as simple as her being hit hard enough and knocked onto the ground hard enough for her to ultimately lose her child. If Kaneki finds this out, if Toka maybe hides the fact from him, but he ma still manages to find out, he may feel extremely guilty for obvious reasons, right? If he tries to push his guilt and his vengeance onto Furuta, like I said, the person that forced him to go into this state, you could ultimately see a Kaneki gunning down for Furuta. And I think that would work well in the form of part three, because for the most part, Furuta is the big villain. He's the big bad villain of this story, give or take. And he's very unorthodox. He's very unseen. He's unknown. And at this point, he's nowhere to be seen. So how he plays a role into the ending of Tokyo Ghoulry and potentially into part three is a whole different ballgame. Furuta's going to die in the story regardless. At this point, I feel like he just has to. He's a character that escapes death all too much, right? The amount of situations he's come up against and he's managed to wiggle his way out of just shows how dangerous of a character he is in general, right? He cannot go around roaming free with the ideals that he usually has proposed. So for the most part, I feel like Kaneki may evidently shift his guilt to Furuta. That could ultimately lead Kaneki to chasing down Furuta and try and kill him. I think it would work well with how the story is kind of proposed right now and how it's structured. But this kind of changes the scenario in general. This changes Kaneki in general. Uh, but for the most part, the whole Toga situation, I don't know how this will affect her as a character. And I don't know how it will evidently affect Kaneki as a character. Because the child itself has a lot of impact, multitude of different like communities, I guess. First and foremost, the parents, right? Toka and Kaneki, it's gonna have the biggest effect on them, right? But it also has the effect on the community, so which would be Kaneki's organization and the people that know that Toka is actually pregnant. This could really flush Kaneki out of his shell. You know, this could really be the thing that brings him out and shows how destructive he can be when he's upset. Because at this point, like I said, we don't know what Kaneki's gonna be. If he's going to be a character that is basically able to kill, I think people forget that if that's a thing, you know, if he's gonna be like the similar character, just he's able to kill now, he will kill on emotion, right? Among other things, he'll be able to kill regardless, but emotion is a very big one. If, if he's angry to that extent, he will kill. If he's sad to that extent, he will probably kill. Like that could potentially be the whole point of Kaneki's character. And if he has that one thing that really brings him to the limit, like really pushes him to go and slaughter people, not without a thought, you know, not him just going around and killing because he's angry, which he could evidently do, but hunting down Furuta and trying to slaughter him, hunting down the V organization at the same time. Like, what if Furuta is in the V organization and Kaneki shifts his blame to Furuta? Like, the reason I killed my child is because you turned me into this monster. I wouldn't be in this position. Ultimately, Kaneki goes to the V organization. He tracks down Furuta. He's with V. Kaneki slaughters V, just ob tries to obliterate them, tries to obliterate Furuta. And before you know it, the CCG are here. They're trying to control Kaneki. He's too far gone at this point like he's not out of control crazy he's just trying to get revenge he he's a father that's just lost his child it's understandable that he would be upset it's understandable that he would be uncontrollable and the only way that you could potentially put that character down of such caliber of such ferociousness a character that's driven by revenge just emotional outrage is to put him down potentially or Hide could evidently bring him back Hide may be the healer that Kaneki needs as much as losing a child is not a thing that many people come back from it's a very dark time and I don't think think there ever is really a bright time from that point on losing a child whether it be a miscarriage or a stillborn or a couple of weeks months or years old like losing flesh and blood to that extent will drive any person to their deepest darkest limits and now that Kaneki has the potential to kill we could evidently see that I'm super excited for it if it does go down that point I think the question for me is I wonder how this will also affect Toka because we've seen a couple of different situations where Toka is in kind of like a, a funeral gown and we we always thought, you know, maybe that is for Kaneki's funeral, but well, you know, what if it's for her child? And I think a lot of people question that when that image came out. And if I can find the image, I'll put it on screen what I'm talking about. It kind of looks like a funeral gown. She's all blacked out. She looks pretty monotone and sad and whatever, but maybe that's it. Maybe that's what that artwork depicted. Who knows? But I think this could be also a good change for Toko. She may evidently either go suicidal or she may get more ruthless as well. So I don't know if you can imagine a powerhouse couple between Kaneki and and Toka being extremely
extremely ruthless because, you know, they've just lost their child and now they're just going on like a slaughter spree. I think something like that would be quite unique, just putting it out there. But for the most part, I am excited to see how this situation unravels. I really feel like we're leading into a part three. It could be just Ishida trying to wrap up the story and whatnot. I feel like the more he tries to wrap up his story, the more there is to be explained. <laughs> and at this point, I'm not sure if she's lost her child. She very well could have. How this pushes our characters further on is really going to lose effect if Ishida ends his story in the next 10, 15 odd chapters and not have a part three. So who knows? Is Ishida trying to wrap up his story really quickly or is he trying to open up avenues to connect Tokyo Ghoul Re to Tokyo Ghoul Part 3? Who knows? So with that being said, what do you guys think? Did Toga lose her child? Did she have a miscarriage? Are we going to see a brand new Toga from here? Is Kaneki going to act on revenge and guilt and everything in between after losing his child? I am very excited to find out. But with that being said, I'm actually going to end the video here. Hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe. I greatly appreciate it. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and I'll catch you guys in the next video.